As many of you guys know, Mizzou is the team that I'm a diehard fan of, but over the last few years, I've developed a passion for a few other schools as well. Teams such as Tennessee, Iowa State, and Oregon State are programs that I find myself routinely rooting for, and that is why it has been so refreshing to see the rise of Oregon State. The program was pretty much dead during the mid-2000s, and for a while, they are going to stay in the cellar of Power 5 football. Ever since Jonathan Smith took over, the Beavers have been in a tremendous spot, have gotten better each and every season, and last year had their breakout. Now they are starting to figure it out in terms of recruiting. They signed their best quarterback recruit in school history, and right now, he is currently 17 years old and has a chance to win the starting job. Apparently, he is more talented than last year's starter and has a real chance of actually beating out DJ Uyangale to be the Beavers' starting quarterback. Let me introduce you to Aiden Childs. He's one of the most underrated and under-talked about quarterbacks in the class of 2023, and despite him being a top 10 quarterback and top 75 recruit nationally, no one is talking about him. Lately though, he has been putting on a show for Oregon State, looked like their best quarterback in their spring game, and is gaining a ton of national hype. I want to introduce you to who he is, talk about his insane rise, and go through how good he could be for the Beavers. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and let me know what topic I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about the rise of Aiden Childs. For a brief rewind, when Jonathan Smith took over, Jake Luton was the quarterback, and while he did eventually get drafted into the NFL, he wasn't that terrific as a Beaver. He would start in 2018 and 2019, before the Beavers would bring in a very high-profile quarterback. He was from Calabasas, California, and his name was Tristan Jebbia. After playing at Nebraska, he decided to transfer, and he got his opportunity to play in 2020. Unfortunately, he would get hurt, and from there, we'd see the rise of Chance Nolan. Nolan took over as the starting quarterback in 2021, and despite them bringing in Colorado transfer Sam Neuer, he never really had a chance. Jebbia would sit on the sideline, and he eventually washed out of the program. This past season, we saw both Ben Golbranson and Chance Nolan take over, and while Nolan was the better player, Golbranson had some key wins, was a good game manager, and it looked like he hadn't fully reached his ceiling yet. The one thing I would say about Oregon State's quarterback play is that it was very game manager-like, and they never had that it factor or that insane athleticism. That's where we now get to talk about Aiden Childs and where he can bridge the gap. So, he is the most anticipated signee of the Jonathan Smith era. It's for good reason. It wasn't always that way though, as going back in time in California, he was actually stuck behind Malachi Nelson. Eventually he would transfer away, and at the time, his new offensive coordinator didn't even know he existed. Now, it's safe to say, both of them know who Aiden is. Childs said he was never given a fair shot at Los Alamitos, the school that Nelson went to, and he said, quote, we went in thinking he was going to get his opportunity for a position that only one person was going to play. He didn't get that opportunity. At the exact same time, he saw an insane growth spurt, and this led him to seriously consider a transfer. Downey High School's head coach noticed the growth spurt as well, and persuaded Aiden to go to Downey. Eventually, he transferred there before his junior year. He was now a confident, tall quarterback who wanted to be in the same conversation as Malachi Nelson and Nico Yamalieva in terms of Cali High School football. To begin his junior year, he had started out by throwing for 1,187 yards and had a 72% completion percentage. Unfortunately, in the sixth game of the season, his throwing hand was crushed. His offensive coordinator said, quote, My heart broke. By the time he got hurt, he was playing some of the best ball in California, to be honest with you. Luckily, Charles would rehab and prepare for his one final season at Downey before an eventual meteoric recruiting rise. As a senior, he threw for 3,350 yards, 38 touchdowns, completed 73% of his passes, and only had 5 picks. That was pretty good numbers, and he had multiple Power 5 offers for a reason. Early on, his recruitment would really ramp up, as he gained offers from big-time schools such as Oregon and Washington, who had great 2022 seasons, and he constantly had a stream of coaches at practices and showcases. At heart though, he still felt doubted, and never bought into the idea that he was actually a blue chip. Despite the hype, he was still pretty under the radar, and was just a 3-star recruit. Now it was time to pick a school, and honestly, it was very fitting for his situation. He eventually chose Oregon State over Kansas State, Washington, and Washington State, and why the Beavers? Apparently, he loved the campus, he developed a special bond with the coaching staff, and honestly, he was going to have a chance to play, potentially early on. What did this mean for Oregon State? He was the first recruit out of high school to be in the Rivals 250 since 2017, when they signed wide receiver Isaiah Hodgins. It's kind of sad for Oregon State, but at the same time, Jonathan Smith is turning it around. He was a quarterback who steadily rose up the rankings. He exchanged his three-star status for four-star status. Heading into the All-American Bowl, he was just outside the Rivals 250, 
but after playing well there, it pushed him into the top 250. After the bump in the rankings, 24-7 Sports said, quote, This is absolutely Oregon State's quarterback of the future, and I think he's a future star in the Pac-12. The craziest part of all of this is he's only 17 years old, and had he stayed in the 2024 class, and had he been in the 2024 class, he would have been even more elite. One scout said, quote, If he were in the 2024 class, how many guys would you have ranked ahead of him? He said maybe one or two. That's a pretty big deal, and we'll never know where he would have finished, but according to 24-7 Sports, Aiden Childs was a four-star recruit, the number seven quarterback, and the 58th best player in the class of 2023. Not quite the same level as Nico and Malachi, but he got pretty dang close. Going into 2023, he'll be competing with returning quarterback Ben Golbranson and Clemson transfer DJ Uyangalale. Here is what the plan was supposed to be. Play DJ, redshirt Childs, and have Golbranson as the backup. That seemed to be the plan on paper, but right now, everything has been flipped up in the air. It would be assumed that the 17-year-old would just redshirt, but there's actually a legitimate chance that he can come in right away, despite nearly every odd stacked against him. This was on full display during the spring game. One local writer said, quote, I left thinking, hey, who's the most talented player? That's easy, it's Aiden Childs. He played better than DJ Uyangole, who started two years at Clemson and was a top two quarterback in his class. Another guy said, quote, I recently asked a high school football coach who spent a few days observing Oregon State's practice about how transfer DJ Uyangole looked. He waved me off and said the freshman, that's who you need to see. Either all this is hype to get clicks or it's legitimate. Apparently, he's easily the best passer and runner on the team and despite being only 17, he's not making a ton of mistakes in practice, and he's been remarkably consistent. And one OSU assistant said, quote, that kid is a baller. With him deciding to enroll early, he gave himself a real chance at the competition. While I wouldn't necessarily place my money on him being the starting quarterback in week one, there's a chance it could happen by the end of the year. If I did have to place money on it, I would say DJ will be the week one starter, because it looks pretty bad for other transfer quarterbacks if that school benches a five star for a freshman. To be fair, Jonathan Smith said he's going to play the most talented guy, who gives him the best chance to win games, but I still think DJ will start week one, and Gilbranson will be a backup. If Oregon State struggles though, I bet Childs will be thrown in, and no matter what in my opinion, he's the guy in 2024. Eventually, Oregon State wants to take that next step and compete for Pac-12 championships. The sooner they hand the keys to Childs, the quicker that may happen. The Pac-12 may not exist in a couple of years, but for now, Aiden Childs is one of the top young quarterbacks in the country, is a hidden gem, and could be generational for the Beavers. But what do you guys think? If you're an Oregon State fan, what do you think of this year's quarterback competition? What do you think of Aiden Childs? And what topic, player, or quarterback should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out my video about the rise of Oregon State. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.